My name is Konmari. This is Marie Kondo, also known as Konmari, a cleaning consultant from Japan. Her book, The Life Changing Magic of Tidying Up, and its sequels have been published in 42 countries and regions and sold more than 6.5 million copies. Her cleaning method of keeping only things that spark joy has fascinated readers worldwide and, most notably, stirred up a phenomenal sensation in the United States. I think she's amazing. I'm sure she can do many things besides her size. Beyond her size. I have the Japanese and the English version.、Yeah. I'm Italian, so I read the first book in Italian and I'm having the second one in English, which is the sparkle of joy. It's a pretty simple、uh, technique, but yet no one really thought of it before her, so that makes perfect sense. Konmani has salvaged numerous messy rooms. She values the mindset for creating a space that sparks joy rather than specific techniques. Her ideas were new to the people in the United States. She's really becoming quite a sensation in this country. People always see America as the, as the country of abundance, and you know, this is the place where you go into the store and you, there's so much, there's so much, so much. And people here are realizing that there's something calming and centering about simplifying. And clearly, she's sort of touched on that zeitgeist, and she's tapping into that in this country. Now, Konmari has flown to New York to teach her method in person. She's going to help people who can't keep tidy. Help me! Let's tidy up and have a happier life. This time, her client is Gina, a homemaker in Brooklyn. Tidying up her place for two days with Konmari, Gina learns the Konmari method. Konmari leaves for Japan, promising to come back in two weeks. How much can Gina tidy up all by herself by the time Komari returns? It's a challenge. One thing never to forget is. Spark joy! Now, let's tidy up with Komari in New York. The goal of my tidying method is not just to reduce what's in a room and remove clutter. My criterion is whether or not you, as its occupant, are comfortable being in that room. So, what I want people to do is to adhere to their own criteria by all means in that sense. The most important part of the Konmari method is tidying not from one room to another, but by category. The order also matters. The key is to improve your sensitivity for what sparks joy in you by starting with things that are easier to tidy. First, clothes. They are easy to go through because you clearly know what you like and dislike. The second easiest are books and papers. Then, komono or miscellany, including stationery, electronics, and kitchenware. Lastly, sentimental items, which are hardest to tidy. This is the order Konmari recommends. Hi, Konmari. I'm Gina. I hope you can teach me how to tidy. I have two adorable little boys and a husband here who live with me, so we have a lot of stuff. In this lesson, they will tidy up the area shared by the family, of which Gina is in charge, and the bedroom. I would say our clutter has been. Getting worse because we've moved a few times into smaller places. And having children, you get more and more things. First of all, she takes pictures to send to Konmari.、Um, the first place that I need help with is our entryway. We have an enormous closet that's not at all functional.、Um, it holds a lot of things, but obviously. Need some help with how things are being put in there. And I want to take one sad picture right there. <laughs> All right, so we're going to show you. This is Mathis right here. Say hi to Marie. Hi. Okay, so we're going to show you the kitchen next. The biggest problem I have in the kitchen is when we go shopping for food, I don't have enough places to put the food. And down here, I'm gonna take a picture of this one. 
<laughs> it's kind of exploding. Um, in the living room, my desk area over here ends up really crowded because we get all these papers from school and just stacks of papers. And my sons are taking piano lessons and here's our piano sitting on top of a refrigerator. <laughs> so Kamari, I need help with my music. My kids are playing piano on top of a refrigerator. This is where I keep all of my clothes and where we keep all the household linens. It gets pretty full and I'm gonna take a picture of that because I know you are the clothing expert, Kamari. As you can see, I don't know what to do with that. <laughs> I hate folding sheets. Help us, Kanmari. My impression is that she indeed has a substantial amount of storage space. So I think the clutter can be reduced depending on how she uses that storage space. You can bring tidying to any place of completion. It is a practical, manual, and physical endeavor as well. So if you continue facing each item properly to the end, you will reach the goal in tidying without fail. visit a house for the first time, I start by greeting the house before I proceed to actually tidy. So please allow me to greet your house. Oh, sure. That would be wonderful. I highly respect houses as entities, and I place a great value in communicating with the house to tidy. When you tidy with that mindset, it will be much more likely for you to be inspired with the overall image for storage like where you should put certain things. At the very beginning, before we start tidying, I ask the client to think of what the ideal life will be for him or her. How would you like to live from now on? Can you also think of what you really want to do? So I like things calm. Um, I would love for things to be easier to clean. <laughs> and I like soft and warm. We would love to do more music in our house, so our harp and piano. At the moment, their electric piano is in the living room, and the harp is buried in the bedroom with its cover on. While you are tidying, I would like you to think of your ideal life, and always keep in mind that this is how you want to live. That this is why you are tidying your place. That would be wonderful. We would love that. First of all, let's go through your own clothes. Okay. Let's put all your clothes together in one place. Just take your clothes out like this, take them all out. So many clothes. <laughs> Okay, good. Now, we should basically have all your clothes here in front of us. What we are going to do is pick the ones that spark joy in you. You have to take each item in your hands and feel it. The criteria are whether it makes you feel glad when you put it on or whether it will make you shine from now on. Okay, what should we do with yes, it sparks joy? Yeah, it sparks joy, okay. It sparks joy. And this one? No joy. No, no joy. joy. Okay. The rule is to thank each and every no joy item that you are going to let go before you throw it away. That's what I'm going to say a special thank you to. Thank you. We had fun together. <laughs> thank you. Okay, here's a question. When you have something that you have to iron, but you don't really like to iron, and so it doesn't really spark joy if you have to iron it, when I iron it and it looks nice, I like it. 
The most important point is whether you want to wear it eagerly enough to take the trouble of ironing it. So I should keep this one. Okay. And then these are this kind of the same. I like them when I've ironed them and they're comfortable, so we'll keep those two. Okay. It is very important to choose what you want to keep rather than what you want to throw away in tidying. In other words, you choose from what's in your house things that you feel happy to keep, things that you can cherish, and things that strike your fancy. That's what it means to choose what sparks joy in you. It was actually a little bit difficult when we first got started. Um, that first skirt took me a very long time. <laughs> okay, what should we do with yes? It sparks joy. Yeah, it sparks joy, okay. <laughs> By the end, it was like, nope, yes, nope, yes. <laughs> so yes, it does get easier. Okay, here's a funny one. This is the shirt I dye my hair in. <laughs> uh -huh. Let's keep it, yeah. had a long life. Long life. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, that's really great. We have completely finished sorting out the clothes. Oh, amazing. When you hang things in this closet, you hang long and heavy items on the left-hand side and increasingly lighter items as you go toward the right. That way, you'll make an ever-increasing line in the closet, which will give you a snappy lift just by standing in front of it. That's the kind of closet we are going to aim for. In the Konwadi method, even the contents of a drawer that is hidden away should spark joy in you. For that purpose, let's learn how to fold clothes. First, you fold in both sides with sleeves like this and make a rectangle that consists mostly of the body. Once you have that rectangle, you fold it in half, again in half, and one more time. It'll be like this. Gina tries it, but can't quite eliminate the wrinkles. That's perfectly fine. You know what? If you fold your clothes as you communicate your love for them with your palm, the fabric will get more taut and you will reduce wrinkles. Oh, okay. Okay. Nice. And I was very inspired by her books, but I was afraid of folding wrong. And, and now I know you basically need to fold whichever way you fold for the drawer size you have. <laughs> it doesn't have to be exactly, you know, the one way. It's okay to have it be your way also. What's most important is that everything in a drawer is visible at a glance when you open it and that it sparks joy in you. Okay, that's it for today's lesson. Thank you. Thank you. Hi! Hi. Come in! Nice to see you again. How about starting today's lesson by tidying up your books? Okay. Wonderful. That would be great. Just like clothes, you are going to take each book in your hands and separate those that spark joy in you from those that do not. And it sparks joy. I would have thought that that would have taken a lot longer than it did. If I stood there at the bookshelf, I might have started reading something, but having it all together, it keeps your mind on the task. <laughs> Next, we are going to go through papers. Let's put all those papers together first and place them here. A magazine. 
When it comes to papers, we can't really base our judgment on the joy they spark. So what I recommend is supposing total disposal. I recommend that you take the viewpoint of supposing total disposal and then choose what you think will be truly necessary to you from now on. Like, do today. <laughs> Oops, do today. This is something that my son is working on currently. If you find unprocessed papers for your children, make separate piles for them because papers are much more manageable when sorted for each person. Let's sort them for each person once. She gave an organizing system that I hadn't thought of, which is for every person, have a keep file and a pending file. She knows what to do. Once we put them all together, there were more than we had expected. However, because we dealt with them in one go, we finished going through them in an hour and a half. That was a tremendous amount of concentration on her part. She was getting faster and faster now that she was relying on her own senses for judgment than the first time around. Okay, we finished organizing the papers over here. How was it? Amazing. This was incredible. It's really invigorating seeing so much done so quickly that you just want to keep it going and to have it be gone in such a quick manner and getting it out of here is just, it's incredible. I feel like 100% confident right now. I think it's going to look really good when she comes back. I hope so. Please welcome Marie Tondo. By the way, there is one thing I would like to ask you. How many of you have already actually tried my Kormati method? So how many of you have tried it? Now, how many of you have actually finished tidying up? Oh! So few! <laughs> now, I would like to spend some time answering some of the questions you gave me. Next question. My husband has a lot of things in our house. What's the best way to get back together? The most effective way to get your husband to get rid of stuff is, honestly, for you to thoroughly finish your own tidying. The point to keep in mind is that while you're tidying up, you don't have to keep insinuating to your husband that you are tidying. If you practice the Konmari method, a certain phenomenon of contagion occurs, and for some mysterious reason, your family and those who live with you get more and more motivated to tidy. That, I think, is partly because they see for themselves that you shine more brightly and change daily for the better, so they feel like trying it out for themselves. Having gone through three categories, clothes, books, and papers with Konmari, Gina is now going to tackle the category of Komono alone. How should she be true to the Konmari method? A first step, take out everything hidden on shelves and in drawers and sort it out. The bathroom had a lot more than I thought it did. How many things can come out of this tiny cabinet on the bottom? But once it was all laid out and then we sorted and sorted, you know, it became clear the categories. Arts and crafts was a huge section for me. And I had my kids help me with that. They literally went through every crayon, figuring out which one sparked joy. Kitchen project is a big one. You have to take everything out and you realize how much stuff you have. I probably had 60 cookie cutters, for instance, one by one by one, and figure out which one sparks joy. And when I pulled it all out and it wasn't sorted yet into subcategories, it is tremendously overwhelming. But then we do it doing the food categories. That was a big day. Got rid of probably three bags 
garbage bags of food. I almost still don't believe that it's mine because I've never had a clear counter in my life. Amazing, shiny, incredible. Hi, Cam Marie. This is Gina. I was working on the kitchen today and we did a lot of work. So I did do my extra storage cabinet here to so be able to see everything and actually reach everything. I can reach it now. So fantastic. She's working so very hard. If you make sure to take everything off the shelves and look at the items one by one, you really begin to see what's truly important to you. So that was the least I wanted her to do. I'm very glad she did it so thoroughly. glance your house looks very tidy yes it does it's not done but we've been working really hard so I'm excited to show you what we've done This area is already so tidy. And then we have wonderful dish cabinets. I have my fine china out for the first time ever. <laughs> so hopefully it'll get used more often. The storage is in the correct state. If you can see where everything is at a glance and if it is organized such that it sparks joy in you when you open it up. So this cupboard is in a very correct state. Stay at home and spend a lot of time in the kitchen, so it's really nice when the kitchen sparks joy. The top of the dresser has gotten very tidy. Now it's a perfect surface for folding. Excellent! <laughs> These are all the tablecloths and table runners in here. And here we have all the dish towels and napkins. And then over here, we have art, and, art supplies for the kids, so it's really easy for them to get what they need. This is very good. And it also comes out, which is nice. This is very good, too. Office supplies, they're all neatly partitioned. The way they are partitioned and the way these things are stored standing are all perfect. You took out that harp. I did. It looks so much prettier than the case. When you described your ideal life at the very beginning, you mentioned your life with music, didn't you? So you did the clothes with me, but we put all the linens, all the sheets. So these are um, just the pillowcases, and then these are the fitted sheets and flat sheets. I've got some memory items of the kids way over there in my costumes. Yeah, pretty good. All the things made of fabric are here, and she follows the rule of making an ever-increasing line. If I'm going to give her a score, I can only give her full marks. Thank you. I had a good teacher. <laughs> this is the only area left undone. We haven't looked at the stuff in here yet, so why don't we take the step of taking everything out once and going through it over again? Okay, it's a lot of stuff. Should we get some help? Mm -hmm. Lewis, can you help us with the closet? Oh, sure. There's a lot of bikes and things, so we have to pull it all out in order to do. Oh, oh you yeah, tripod. Okay. Hey, boys. Oh, that's exciting. Your tripod. That's great. It's exciting to find a lot of things in the closet that, you know, we either couldn't use or that I'd forgotten that I had, and it's a lot more economical than going shopping and buying new things. What's in there, Marcus? Uh, oh my Are you excited to see Big Bear? Hey, Julian, do you want to see Big Bear? Does Big Bear still spark joy? Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Big Bear. <laughs> Go on, right on the outside so you can 
Okay, so, so far we've sorted everything by category. I would suggest installing something with height so that you can store things vertically. That will reduce the clutter quite a bit. And these bikes? You said you don't use them that often, so I recommend that, because you have room around here, you get something to hang them on the wall with. What do you think? Oh, I think it's beautiful. <laughs> Look at that, it's so organized. So I think I'm going to put the music space here. Can you help me set it up? Of course, okay. I did entirely on my own turned out well, and I'm, I'm proud of them. Wow. I've had really good training. Thank you so much. <laughs> One thing I noticed as I helped people tidy in many different countries is that in every country, people are distressed about tidying. I really feel that my method can be useful to anyone in any country. Therefore, my current goal is to organize the world. The big goal I'm working toward is to put the entire world in order. <laughs>